Folks, the world we live in is crazy, and in today's episode, we are gonna find out if you, or me, or anyone we know is at risk of becoming an automaton, bloodthirsty mushroom zombie. I mean, any more than we normally are. <laughs> and in the hit video game turned hit TV show, The Last of Us, they explore these things and show us what the world would look like if this was possible. To be honest, it scares the hell out of me, but what I wanna know is, could it happen in real life? Let's take a look at the science behind The Last of Us and figure out if any of us should be worried. With more emphasis placed on the cordyceps brain infection in The Last of Us Season 2, it's worth exploring how accurate the science is on the show and how realistic it would be if the fungal pathogen could transmute humans into mind-controlled automatons. After all, it's already been proven that cordyceps, also known as the zombie ant fungus, can infect anthropods and make them behave against their nature and promote fungal reproduction. Oh god, I hope it can't do the same to you and me. <laughs> the Last of Us is set in a post-apocalyptic future in which humanity has been ravaged by a fungal infection and controls human minds and turn hosts into brainless, hyper-aggressive zombies. <gasps> The purpose is to spread the disease and extend the fungal species across the land. Although there are many real-life fungal diseases, also known as mycosis, The Last of Us revolves around a specific strain, known as the cordyceps. Because there are some fungi who seek not to kill, but to control. Or Ophiocordyceps unilateris. Honorable. Uh, I think you're trying to say honorable. Shut up! Hey, I'm sorry. A parasitic fungal mutation that humans can pass to other humans. Which populates a horde of violent zombie-like monsters who scour the land and look for more people to infect. Beyond the scientific backdrop, The Last of Us follows Joel and Ellie, two survivors and unlikely companions who forge a strong emotional bond while escaping a quarantine zone. While traversing the zombie-strewn countryside together, Joel and Ellie encounter one fungally infected flesh eater after another, many of which are categorized by the severity of their illness. Businesses. There's runners, stalkers, clickers, and bloaters. Each of which behaves differently based on their exposure to the mutated cordyceps. Without spoiling any specific plot points, the cordyceps brain infection is a major theme throughout both seasons of the show, leading to a harrowing season 2 finale that has admittedly divided fans of the game and the series alike. Please don't, don't. In Season 1, the fungal disease spread environmentally through crops and later through saliva and other bodily fluids caused by physical bites. But in Season 2, the cordyceps evolved into an airborne disease that humans contracted by breathing the infectious spores. However, the central question remains. Can cordyceps infect the human brain the way they do in The Last of Us? Well, it's a little bit complicated, but the simple answer is no. Well, at least, not yet. Although mutated cordyceps have been proven to infect ants, spiders, and other insects, there is no proof that the fungus can infect the minds and affect the behavior of human beings, thank God. <laughs> but here's how the zombie ant fungus infects anthropods. The spores of the cordyceps act like a parasite that attacks insects, eats through their exoskeleton, and controls their brain to act in the fungus's favor. Specifically, the spores take over control of the insect's mind and motor functions, causing irregular behavior. It keeps its puppet alive by preventing decomposition. How? The spores will then manipulate the host to climb to the highest possible altitude, usually bushes or trees, and expose the fungus to as much sunlight as possible. More sunlight equals better breeding conditions equals more fungus. And this expansion of underground fungus is known as mycelium. The fungus controls the insect's minds and deliberately kills them to promote reproduction. Once the host insect dies, the fungus grows out of the insect's head, sprouts a mushroom, and releases more predatory spores on and around the insect to find their next host and repeat the process over and over and over. It's my games. These guys want to take over the world, I'm convinced of that. And this is all well-proven science that really serves as the basis for The Last of Us. It's the long way or the whiff fucking dead way. Well, I vote long way. Fortunately, humans, given our current climate and body temperatures, do not have to fear the imminent danger of funguses turning us into disgusting mushroom creatures. Far from conjecture, Yale School of Medicine assistant professor Scott Roberts, who specializes in infectious diseases, had this to say about the cordyceps brain infection and how it's portrayed in The Last of Us. 
Very few fungi or molds spread person to person, so a fungal pandemic is not too likely. There are millions of different fungal and mold species out in nature that don't cause any sort of infection in humans, and this is one of them. A cordyceps that infects one species of ant cannot even infect other species of ants. And I don't know about you, but to me that is like a warm hug from your grandmother. Take a bite so that I can watch you enjoy. That's my favorite part. So the primary physiological attribute that humans have is the body temperature, and that protects us from these types of cordyceps. Most fungal species are unable to grow and reproduce at temperatures higher than 98.6 degrees. Which, if you didn't know that that is the standard human body temperature, then watch Osmosis Jones. Like the video if you got that. Most fungal strains in general struggle to thrive at anything above 94 degrees Fahrenheit. So, in general, unless you're like a block of ice freezing to death already, you probably don't have to worry about it. Moreover, the vast majority of fungal infections are not transmittable from human to human. Some diseases can be spread from small animals to humans, but Roberts claims that cordyceps is not one of them. And he thinks that humanity should not be concerned in the slightest, quoting, Viruses are set up to spread person to person. We sneeze and it can infect 20 people in the right setting. Fungal infections come from the environment through inhaling spores or an exposed wound. And once you're infected, the risk of spreading it to another person is exceedingly low. The Last of Us depicts this disease as spread through contaminated food supply. And while it is true that many bacterial infections can be spread this way, a la E. coli, that sounds good. I'll have that. Something like this would have a much harder time surviving, thriving, and spreading through food or water or alike. Speaking of alike, <laughs> okay, I'm done. Now, if the climate keeps getting hotter and hotter and hotter, as it has been, something like this all of a sudden becomes a lot more possible. This mission, it just got a hell of a lot more impossible. -er. Go away. If the planet becomes hotter, certain fungal pathogens could evolve enough to subsist higher temperatures. What if... For instance, the world were to get slightly warmer. So if that happens, we lose. Making humans even more susceptible to this infection. In The Last of Us, the cordyceps adapt to warmer weather and human body temperatures. While this isn't currently possible with cordyceps, a fungal strain known as Candida auris already thrives in warmer climates. Scarier yet is that it has adapted to warmer climates and it can be spread from human to human. Now is not the time for fear. That comes later. However, Roberts provides some comfort to us once again, saying that even if we did contract something like Candida auris, the chances of it turning us into bloodthirsty, violent zombies is next to nothing. Now, for you science freaks out there, sure. Certain fungal properties, such as those found in psilocybin, can alter the human brain chemistry and make people hallucinate. But the effect wears off after the mushrooms have been digested, and they don't cause chronic transmissible illnesses. So, again, that's out. Now, if The Last of Us had retained the game's original timeline, perhaps the cordyceps brain infection could be more plausible. See, in the game, the fungal pandemic occurred in 2013, with Joel and Ellie's apocalyptic sojourn taking place in 2033. The TV show shifted the timelines back by a decade, with the pandemic picking up in 2003 and then the story starting in 2023, which does make the show feel more relevant to the time it came out. Yet by making the show more timely, it stretches the scientific credibility even thinner. However, the likelihood is that between 2025 and 2033, there probably isn't enough time to increase temperature significant enough to make cordyceps evolved enough to be able to affect us. Now, if the show had been set a millennium in the future, we'd all be fucked right now. <laughs> but aside from rising temperatures, over reliance on antibiotics could potentially lead to more infections, specifically fungal infections, being possible. Overusing antibiotics, many of which are produced by fungi, can weaken a person's immune system, eliminating all beneficial and harmful bacteria at once. Where do we get penicillin from? Fungus. <laughs> oh. But again, even if fungal infections became as threatening as they are in The Last of Us, they would not necessarily control our minds or have us enslaved or involuntarily doing things. I mean, what, you don't want to be a disgusting meat puppet with hyperviolent tendencies? Another key difference between humans and anthropods is that our nervous systems are far more complex than those of insects. The nervous system of insects is mainly comprised of easily malleable ganglia, 
a simple network of nerves that can be controlled. Humans have far more complicated brains and cerebral mechanisms that would prevent us from being hacked and hijacked by cordyceps or any other mutated fungal strain. Look, here's the bottom line. The Last of Us uses a fictional pandemic to raise awareness about the potential danger of fungal infections, emphasizing the dramatic need for more scientific research, which we do need. Of course, creative liberties had to be taken to create a story and a compelling game that could get audiences and players alike hooked. We are not sick! And it definitely does that. But as the science stands today, it looks like you, me, and anyone we know are safe from becoming specifically the last of us zombies. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe we should try this with other... <laughs> Maybe we should try this with other science. That's it for me, and I am out of here. Thank you for clicking on our video, everybody. If you like what you saw here, please make sure you like the video and subscribe and share with your friends who like this sort of content. Joe Blow was created by movie fans for movie fans, and we appreciate your support.